We started in Genesis 12 last week. We were introduced to a man named Abram. Abraham, you might know him from the uh, song you sang as a little kid if you grew up in church. Uh, Father Abraham had many sons. Anyone remember? Many sons had five. Okay, stop. You guys are amazing singers, but we don't have time for it. Father Abraham is the father of a faith. The Christian faith, the Jewish faith, the Islamic faith, every one of those three faiths, over one-third of the world's population, call Abraham father. This is a significant man. In fact, if you're not a Christian, you want to know about Abraham just because of how influential he is to Western civilization. He was a man who happened to life. Life didn't happen to him. He was a man of vision. Uh, here he is. He's the last living hope on the earth before the candle of the gospel flickers out. Uh, his dad was an idol worshiper. His grandpa was an idol worshiper. He was very likely going to become an idol worshiper. And then in Genesis chapter 12, God calls Abraham and says, if you'll trust me, if you'll follow me, I'll make a great nation out of you. Now this is said to a man, 75 years old, who has no kid. This is said to a man, Abram, whose name means father. Later on, his name's gonna be changed to Abraham, which basically means big daddy. And he has no children whatsoever. So God gives this open invitation, follow me. Where are we going? Well, I'll tell you later, but follow me. Leave your dad, leave your land, and go to the place that I will show you later. And Abraham had a choice. He could either follow God with his unanswered questions and the tension that that entails into wherever God was gonna take him based on the promise that God would do what he said he was gonna do, that God would be faithful to his promises, or he could stay where he was with the certainty and the security of his land, his wealth, and his family. What does Abraham decide to do? Well, he decides to trust God. And so in Genesis chapter 12, where we left off last week, he takes his stuff, he takes his wife Sarai and his um, nephew Lot and all of his herdsmen and his, his whole crew, and they leave. They leave Haran and they travel south down to Canaan. And, and as they're going down to Canaan, they get to a place called Shechem. Uh, this is all review, by the way. We didn't cover this last week, so I'm giving you the Cliff Notes version. They get to Shechem, he builds an altar there and he names it Bethel, basically the house of God. He met with God in that place. God at that place gives Abraham another promise and says, I'm going to, I promise I'm going to do what I said I was going to do. I'm going to make you a great nation. I'm going to multiply your life, Abraham. You just got to trust me. And Abraham says, okay, Lord, I'll trust you. And then something bad happens. A drought hits the land. They're driven from Canaan all the way to Egypt. So they travel all the way to Egypt. And when they get into Egypt, Abraham knows I'm an unfriendly territory here. The Egyptians and the Jews, they don't really get along too well. And so here's what I'm going to do. Since I know they're probably going to take my wife from me and do God knows what with her and probably kill me for being her husband. I'm going to lie. I'm going to call my wife, my sister, Joe Dirt style, and maybe they'll take her, but they won't kill me. By the way, man, that's not a good idea to call your wife your sister so that some other man can take her and have his way with her just so that you won't die. But that's exactly what Abraham did. And he had a tremendous moral failure. Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, takes Abraham's wife to be with himself, does, you know, whatever with her, and God's punishment is on the house of Pharaoh for what he was doing to Abram's wife. Abram, on the other hand, is benefiting from being Pharaoh's best friend. He's getting all kinds of cattle and riches and, uh, and getting wealthier and wealthier and wealthier, and as the judgment of God falls on the house of Pharaoh, uh, he basically wakes up and says, why is all this bad stuff happening to me? He figures out that Abram was lying about his wife. He really was his wife. It wasn't his sister. And as soon as Pharaoh finds out, he kicks out Abram, he kicks out uh, Sarai, he kicks out Lot, he kicks the whole crew out, says, you got to leave Egypt, you got to go back where you came from. All of that's chapter 12. <laughs> Can you believe it? We pick up in chapter 13 as Abram...